Hey guys, welcome back. I'm doing a little bit different style video today. I'm actually going to be going through some of my favorite no-code tools and really focusing on the software as a service stack. And so what I have been using for businesses I've been helping and businesses I have myself, I'm going to kind of break them down, explain the, the differences, uh, pros of them, what they're used for, and hopefully it gives you some ideas of what you might be able to use for building out your own business or idea. So for someone who's entrepreneurial, ideas need to be created and tested very quickly. An idea isn't valuable if it isn't executed. And with that being said, scaling your time and creating consistency is also really important. So a lot of these are great for either running your business or building out an MVP. Um, if you're not familiar with an MVP, that's a minimally viable product. Now you'll probably hear that term more around like startups or trying to get an idea out in the world. And that's really better if you're if you have a small audience. If you have a larger audience, that can be kind of dangerous because if you release something that's kind of buggy and um, then you can kind of get a bad reputation for that. That's a whole nother thing later on. But getting your product or idea executed out in the world quickly allows you to learn and make improvements and see if this is a good fit. And especially using these no code tools allow you to do that in a lower cost. So for, I'm going to break these up into about three main categories. It's uh, designing, marketing, and then extended functionality because that one kind of varies. So I'm going to start off with the designing phase here and, and really focusing mainly on websites since we're doing the software as a service. And so the first design tool um, that I really love using is Webflow. So Webflow is a visual website build that allows you to manipulate the code in a very clean way and it generates very clean code unlike a lot of these other uh, you know, developing building tools and has a ton of functionality and it's going to be getting even better here pretty soon. Uh, there's some things that are in beta and haven't been launched yet. And I'll cover those later. And those will also be able to pretty much get rid of some of these other things we'll talk about later. But the functionality here is almost endless. It does have an awesome dynamic content management system. And I love how you have just complete design control over pretty much whatever you're doing in here. Now the learning curve is going to be a little bit steeper. And if you do have some time, you can go ahead and, and dive into their awesome tutorials and learn a lot of that. I you know, do some stuff here, but I'm on a, a Webflow specific channel. So they have a ton of resources to be able to learn Webflow and at least be able to grab a template and start editing it yourself if you want to. Now, the next one I've used before, and I also recommend to people that just need to get something up really quick um, with a lower budget is Squarespace. So that one, I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of ads for it. So they're really template based and they have some pretty beautiful templates and they can also integrate with a lot of stuff. Customization here is really low. It's kind of sticking with the template that you have and there's nothing wrong with that if you need to get something up really quick. And because it has less design freedom, the user experience on your end, the builder, is gonna be a lot nicer. Um, you'll, it's gonna be fairly simple for you. You can still do dynamic content. Um, and so hands down, if it comes to really wanting full control over the design webflow is gonna be your best bet and especially scalability in my opinion and you want to be a webflow if you need to get something up just to offer up some services or whatever that is you can just get a template with squarespace and probably save you some headache and then also for designing and ideating all these things i love using figma um, figma is nice because it's in the web browser you can also download an app and you can even do some workarounds and work on it with an iPad, your tablet, and so on the go. So here you're gonna have a little bit of, of UI and UX experience or an idea of how to design these, or at least ideate these. You can do, you can prototype some pretty awesome stuff. You can, you know, design out your full site if you know how to design, but maybe not develop, and hand it off to a developer. And I've even prototyped um, some whole ex experiences in here doing design sprints and trying to get some feedback for customers on in Figma. I also really like their Fig Jam tool that's uh, fairly new to them. So it's like an infinite canvas that you can sketch and, and have notes and ideate a bunch of things. It's um, it's pretty nice to use. And you might find it really enjoyable for trying to get some ideas on the board uh, for your, your product or business. Now, of course, you also have the other uh, whole design suite from you know, Adobe or Affinity. If you want to tack on some more design stuff and even something like um, Adobe Express or Canva, if you're trying to get some other things designed like for marketing, business cards, whatever you need there. But that leads me into the next category, so marketing. And I have a couple of things here that I love to use uh, myself for uh, marketing purposes. And the first one, which is pretty new to my, my setup, I've been using it for the past couple of weeks here, and I think it's here to stay for me. And it's actually gonna be Jasper AI. So Jasper is an AI writing tool, and it does a really good job of being able to 
write for you. You can write your website copy, email, blog posts, um, social media, pretty much anything you can think of. And you can get a basic plan and even the boss boss mode plan, which allows you to do some even better stuff. Now, you do need to guide it. It's not going to be amazing without any effort at all. You do need to give it a little bit of guidance, uh, you know, be able to describe your product, know who that market's for, so it can start working for you. And it's great if you're not comfortable doing copywriting. And it's also great if you might be comfortable, but you just need to speed up your workflow. And I love it for speeding up my workflow, getting things out and, and then editing them there further myself. Now, another one I use is MailChimp. This might not be considered a no-code tool, but you can still do some automations and integrate with your other systems in here. And I love how there's a free plan. I'm sure there's other uh, products that might even be better than MailChimp, but I've been using MailChimp for a bit. I, I love it and it does everything I need. And having a mailing list is gonna be really important if you're working on your product, your business, because you can speak to these people directly and other ways you wouldn't be able to with social media platforms and everything that you're at the whims of their algorithms. Now I have another one for social media here and this one is called Later Media. Now I was trying to find some social media schedulers and I think there's probably more out there, but I stuck uh, with this one. This is great to automate your content creation in a little bit, mainly the, the scheduling and posting across multiple channels. And especially helpful, I think, if you manage other people's social media, if you're in that um, in that business. But I like spending probably like one day a week and then trying to create all that content. And then I just put it on here, schedule it out across different channels, you know, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever it needs to be on. Um, you can do TikTok, social media, you can post videos, photos, write posts, it'll help you search for hashtags. And there's more in here that I'm not even using that you can really find powerful. Because consistency is gonna be really important whenever you're trying to do your uh, product or idea early on and getting it out there in front of people. And if you do it once, automate everything, you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the week instead of trying to scramble to try to do everything you know, the day of. And lastly, I consider this one in marketing because of the, at least the way I use it and it's type form. I, I knew about it, I didn't really look at it, but recently I started using it mainly for trying to vet clients and, and have them in sort of an onboarding flow, if you will. I find it really nice being able to ask these really specific questions, get their answers and integrate that data with like my project management. For example, I use Notion. And so if someone fills out this form then it goes into my my Notion database and I think it notifies me on Slack as well that, hey, someone reached out and is wanting to do a project and it already has all the information. And it's just a, a lot nicer than doing something like just a contact form. It's just a little bit more personal and you can even create logic on it based on certain answers they answer or take payments if you need to, but I've been enjoying it. Okay, so in the last category here, we have some advanced functionality. Now, these are some things you might want to think about if you're creating a certain type of service or product or trying to build out an MVP and things that I use on a regular for clients and myself as well. So the first one is going to be member stack. Now, creating memberships is pretty important for gated content or just subscriptions, whether it's free or paid. And member stack is a really awesome way to get that started and it integrates really nicely with Webflow for using Webflow and there's some pretty advanced stuff if you're a developer you can do as well. Of course, you can take all these payments and do gated walls. You can create customer dashboards and they're actually already in beta testing for 2.0 and I'm testing that right now. And so these features are gonna get even better here pretty soon. So next, and you might have seen these, is uh, Make or used to be Integromat and Zapier. So these are gonna allow you to communicate with APIs of products and really automate some processes and workflows and make things a lot easier for yourself. For example, if someone fills out a form, you can have the automation get sent to a few different things and, and do some things for you that, that you, you might do manually right now, but it's automated. For example, if a client pays a starting invoice, then maybe they're automatically sent some emails with an onboarding flow and then a project dashboard is made for them with their information sent to them, all without you having to do anything. Now I used Integromat a lot whenever I built a marketplace for a client um, and I use Integromat in some of the couple of things I do. It's And so there's all kinds of stuff you can do in here. And it, if you wanna get even more advanced, it does help to know APIs a little bit, what those are and how they communicate. I won't go over those here, but um, that's later on the line if you wanna get even more technical with building out some of these things. 
Now next you have Airtable and you might wonder why a database is in here. Having a good database is going to be a great foundation for whatever you know, software or product you're building that's digital, um, whether it be managing um, user accounts or people or just data. Um, you can even use Airtable as your project manager. It's really user friendly and you can even design interfaces in here. They have a designer and people have made marketplaces on Airtable. So you can run automations out of Airtable as well and create some pretty advanced stuff. And I've also used it to extend the functionalities of the content management system that Webflow has. Again, uh, something that you can keep as simple or as complex as you need it to be. Now here's an advanced one, but it's one of my favorites right now, and it's actually Wise. So Wise is pretty new to the scene. They came out last year. I came across them on Product Hunt, and I used them to build a marketplace for a client and, and do some other projects for myself. Wise attaches to your Webflow projects, and it allows you to communicate with other REST APIs to do all kinds of Stripe payments and integrations to integrate natively with Airtable and give you all these database functions and abilities to create custom commands and trigger things you wouldn't be able to otherwise. I don't think it's something you're easy to be able to just pick up and start creating stuff with. They do have a little bit of tutorials and you can do some basic functionality to extend what Webflow can't do in there going through the tutorials. But once you understand APIs and especially if you decide to get more advanced and learn a little bit of code, I consider this some no code and, and low code for sure. Then you can really take full advantage of of WISE and its abilities. So overall, it does have a steeper learning curve, but I think it's really powerful to add to your stack if you're wanting to create um, a really nice web app. Now, one more thing I use on almost every project I do, uh, whether it be personal or client facing, is uh, FinSuite Attributes. Now, FinSuite is a separate web development company, but they've been doing some awesome stuff in the no-code community and making all these no-code solutions, um, really just using the attributes for Webflow. Now I've done a few videos on them. I think uh, past two videos I released were using FinSuite attributes, but they really extend the functionality of Webflow and they push the limits of, of Webflow, I, I, I feel. Now FinSuite also has some other hacks and things you can do with Webflow. So they're really nice to look at if you're just wanting to, if you have some really intricate ideas in mind. So last year here we have Stripe. Now your MVP has to make money for you somehow and take payments. Now a lot of these that I already mentioned are natively integrated with Stripe. And a lot of other businesses that you probably interact with every day use Stripe. You just don't know it. So a lot of small companies and large companies use Stripe. Stripe is, is a really awesome payment service. And again, you can make it as complex or as simple as you need. You can do custom webhooks and make automated stuff, or you can keep it simple, make a payment link and someone buy a product from you and you make some money. So Stripe is usually something I recommend for most, if not all of the payment systems for building on an MVP, subscriptions, etc. Now I do have an honorable mention in here and it's not something that I have experience with, but I've seen a lot and has a lot of great functionality if you need it. And it's actually bubble.io. Now, this also lets you design and develop web apps and is really powerful on the back end side of things, you know, making payments, user accounts, custom workflows and databases. Now it is lacking on the design side and you're probably better off sticking with a template and instead of trying to veer out of it, unless you're really comfortable with it, but you can create some really awesome stuff in here. And I've seen some awesome stuff created in Bubble. So I wanna make this an honorable mention, uh, not because I have experience with it, but because I know it's a valid option out there. But okay, so these are some of the no-code and low-code tools that I use on a regular to you know, run my business um, and other endeavors that I do. And so hopefully this is valuable to you, at least to get your, your brain going with some ideas of, of what you want to create. The point of this stuff really is to try to execute in the best way you can and the quickest way you can. So that's the benefit of these no-code no and a lot of these low-code tools as well is really getting to market quicker. So hopefully you enjoyed this, got a little bit of value on it. Um, and I'll be going into these a little bit later, but for now there already is a lot of web flow and attribute content on this channel. And I'll be doing some more of this no code stuff uh, here pretty soon. If you're coming to this video for the first time and it's not up yet, but subscribe and thanks for watching.